Welcome back, everyone. I am the Bad Luck Gamer, and today I'm going to round out my whole why you should play slash how to play a Pathfinder series with the how to DM for Pathfinder 2nd Edition. And my biggest tip above everything is literally just get a GM screen. It doesn't even matter if you're playing online. The GM screen just has so much good information. Almost all of them have really, really good information. The biggest tables that I would recommend looking into is the DCs by level table, which I'll show y'all here since I don't know if the information's easy available online. Oh, we don't have a focus. But the DCs by level. And in addition to that, the condition list. Yeah. Typically, the first page is the condition list that lists all the conditions. Now, I'm not much of one to always advocate to get like GM tools necessarily, but Pathfinder 2nd Edition, the biggest thing you need to know is it's a game that uses a lot of different traits which relate to different things. For instance, if something has the manipulate trait, that means it reactive strike is procced by it. So if an if an ally is or if a player is pulling a potion out of a bag or if they're reloading a gun or if they're casting magic more often than not, enemies that have reactive strike can use it. And that's all based on the manipulate trait. There's also a variety of other things that interact directly with manipulate. In addition to the traits, there's conditions. One of the most common conditions you're going to find is the off guard condition, which is usually caused by either flanking or an enemy being fainted or whatever. And it only just drops an enemy's AC by two, but it's a circumstance penalty, which can stack with status penalties that come from like frightened, which is a condition. It seems like that's a lot of information, but honestly, it's not, especially when you learn that very quickly the most common conditions you're running into is off guard, frightens, and concealed. Concealed makes it so that you need to make a flat check to hit the enemy, DC 5, and or the, or the player, whichever one, it doesn't really matter. And also players can use it to hide as well, which can make them hidden which makes enemies flat-footed to them or off guard to them when they attack from hidden. So these are like the most common. Other than that, it's just more or less spell descriptions. What the spell says, sickened is the same as frightened, all kinds of stuff. So just having the list of conditions and the list of traits in the game goes a long, long way. Other than that, most actions players take on it around is some kind of movement action, typically a stride, some kind of strike action, and some kind of magic casting action. Those are like the most common. Again, there's a bunch of smaller situations, but if you can get a mastery of these basic systems that I'm talking about now, the game is pretty easy. So beyond just getting a grasp of what the game is and what tools are useful to you, I'll also say that one of the big kind of mess ups a lot of GMs take is making Pathfinder 2E into a hard mode dungeon crawl. That's like, that's the biggest problem. It's a complaint I see more often than not that players feel like they can't play without optimizing because every fight is a hard fight because the GMs always like to, to crank up the difficulty because they feel like every fight needs to at least have some difficulty in order to be enjoyable, which I'll let you know is not the case. Most video games, when you're playing them, you're going to run into situations where you're finding a bunch of enemies and they're not that difficult. You can get through the encounter. It feels like fluff, right? Well, those fluff fights, those fights where most of the enemies are minus two to the party level, are for the players to get used to their kit, to try things out on enemies that are not as dangerous. And more importantly than I think any of that, it's to allow the GM to add other factors to the combat. A fight can gain difficulty in other ways other than increasing enemy stats. You can give the enemy terrain that is in their favor. Heck, 
you can give the players terrain in their favor that they can learn to utilize and use to their advantage. There's also different encounters, different types of scenarios where there are certain win conditions for the players. For instance, maybe the players need to hold the enemy off for a certain amount of turns and the enemy seems near limitless. That is a great encounter to have somewhat weaker enemies because it makes the players more pressed on either optimizing damage to kill as many as possible or doing whatever is necessary to survive. Difficult counters are important, don't get me wrong. You want your, your demi-bosses and you want your bosses to feel impactful. But the more you experiment with low-end encounters that are not always putting your players at risk, the more you can put into higher level encounters that then the players can see and recognize, oh, this is one of these kind of events, only now we're dealing with a boss battle. That's infinitely more interesting than what's called white room combats, which is you're in an open field, the grid is 10, spa 10 squares by 10 squares, and everything takes place in this grid, and there's no obstacles, there's no terrain, nothing. There's nothing wrong with those kind of combats, and sometimes they can be fun, but combats are way more interesting when there are unique things in the environment to utilize. In fact, the more things you can put in the environment that players can interact with, that they can use to their advantage, the more fun you'll find your players having in most games. And there's a multitude of traps and different kinds of things that Pathfinder puts into the game. Heck, you can even make certain timed events in a game where a play players can get special loot if they manage to complete it in time, you know. Look at video games. There's a great way to set up encounters and set up challenges and puzzles that you can see in video games are very easy to recreate in tabletop. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Like, th those are honestly all it takes to be a good DM in Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Just you know, either get a version of the the DM's cover, you know, the the GM screen, and just vary up your encounters. Each encounter has a point, and the point isn't always to challenge the players. In fact, the point should often be to enhance the player's game by giving unique or interesting scenarios. That's always what makes the games more fun. The rest of it is stuff that you're just going to have to get better over time and is stuff that you're just going to have to get better as a general GM, like how to improv, how to set up your campaigns, how to write out a world of your own making. Because at the end of the day, for a lot of these kinds of things, there's no advice that you can really give because it's all situational as well. What kind of games your players want, what kind of games inspire you as a GM and all kinds of things. Uh, oh, I, I guess actually, if you're if you're coming over from like D and D or some other tabletop game, one thing I'm I'm highly highly going to recommend: make consumables plentiful in Pathfinder Second Edition. Pathfinder Second Edition, and make gold plentiful as well. Like not like absurdly plentiful, but honestly, when the players start getting to end game, they're not going to have enough gold. No matter how much you feel like you're giving them, they're just not going to have enough. When runes start costing 10,000 gold a piece, they're, they're going to hit a, a money cap on their loot eventually. But early game, you can buy first level scrolls for four gold pieces. Potions don't go for like three gold pieces up to like 50, and that's like high end. There's honestly a lot of really cool and interesting consumables that can change. They, they are something that you can give your players that push them beyond what they're capable of. One of my favorite like alchemical items is Mistform Mutagen because you just drink it and your character is constantly concealed, meaning enemies have a 25% chance of just missing you on every hit. And it's not a very high level mutagen either. There's also Cheetah Elixir that can make a player faster. There's there's all kinds of really cool consumables and even magic items to give to your party. Pathfinder 2nd Edition is really designed to be a high magic setting with all kinds of fun doodads, gadgets, and whatever. And of course, you can play a low magic setting, you can remove level by proficiency, and you can bring everything down. And that's very, very possible. But just remember that that's something you have to do and take away from the system. So 
if you're if you want to play a high magic system, it's already there. You know what I mean? If you want to play a low magic system, then you don't really have to worry about any of this kind of stuff. So it, the the advice is more for people who are interested in using high magic as the general theme, because honestly, there's it's just so, so many cool consumables and it prevents players from kind of devolving into the same kind of line of thought where they're going through and using the same tactics every combat because it's super effective. That's one of the reasons why I mentioned terrain and shaking up your combats, because the more varied you can make combat in your game, the more staying power your campaign has, and overall, the more enjoyment your party is going to have. But that's it. That's about 10 minutes or so of information. If you enjoy this kind of content, please leave a like so that other people get a chance to see it. And as well, subscribe. I'm going to be dipping into other game systems here soon. I'm going to be doing, you know, reviews for other games, how to play other games, other kind of information like that. So if you want to go to your place for all things TTRPG, well, then this channel is the place to be. And as well, if you want to be notified 100% of the time whenever a video comes up, join our Discord linked in the description. We have all kinds of people. We have almost 250 members in our Discord chat. At, or well in our discord not necessarily in the chat at any time right now and anytime a video goes live you get a 100 percent notification when that happens but like i said that's gonna be it for me thank you all so much for watching good luck with your games leave the bad luck to me and i'll see you all next time bye